everybody, I'm Esther and this is Fouch Family Off Grid. I've been doing a lot of editing lately and I'm giving myself a break today, but we still wanted to say hello. So here's our low stress format. We're going to tell you five good things and we're going to answer a few questions. Nick, what's a good thing? A good thing is that we're gonna put a basketball hoop on the front of the shop when it gets stood up and we have a great big driveway space in front of it so we can uh, shoot some hoops. The rain garden in front of the little house is a success. I've been hesitant to give details about even what the rain garden is or how it works because I've never made one before and I wasn't completely sure that it would be effective. But as the spring uh, is marching along and leaning towards summer, we have a garden in front of our house that does not at this point require any irrigation and I think is going to have resilience through the summer as, we, as our heat comes on and it gets very dry. Let me show you how I made it. There are three connected deep beds. I dug out 10 to 14 inches of hard packed clay and rock and I completely removed that material. I replaced it with straw and at that point I have to be honest I kind of despaired because uh, when spring happened those spaces were completely anaerobic. They were they were not a good composting situation. There wasn't enough oxygen. You can tell that because there's this really bad smell that happens when material is trying to compost without enough oxygen. And I thought there's not enough drainage in this. I have not succeeded. I didn't do this right. I added more straw and then I took about four inches of my good compost that I made myself last summer and I put that on top. And all that material is making these little plants very, very happy. So there is enough drainage because I raised the plants up off of that, the bottom of the pit. I raised them up so there's enough drainage for their roots, but there still is a, a, a dip down effect that's capturing water and also sheltering these plants a little bit from the wind, and so we have a win. My good thing is my irises are in bloom. There's three right here, three right here, and three right there. And there. So, um, apparently I have a lightsaber now. Uh, we got some storage when Dad and I were in town. It's red. Darth Maul um, designed. And stuff like that, apparently. Mom's no plastic toys rule isn't very strict nowadays. <sighs> My good thing is that I now know how to make videos. Do you want to explain anything about that? Uh, no. Now a couple of answers to questions you have asked. A lot of you have been asking about our our subscriber giveaway. We reached 100,000 subscribers in the spring, right in the middle of my spring madness, and uh, we had a, a contest for someone to name the channel. We do have a winner, her name is Alina. We are working on her video and her package, but it's gonna be a little slow. This is classic Fouch family. We really do awesome things, but we very rarely do them on time. We wanna do it right. We want Nick to be able to put something in that package, and we're gonna let him timber frame the shop first. But we'll get to you, Alina, don't worry. Another question that we've gotten a few times this spring is what happened to our bees or how are our bees doing? What happened over the winter is that one of our colonies was invaded by mice. And so we lost that colony. We found it in the spring with mice actually living in the box. Um, and we took that box apart and cleaned it out. And then the first hive, the, the larger colony, swarmed. So that's a, 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 that means that the, the colony split and a part of it went up into a tree looking for a new home. Bees are very, very, very smart. When they are looking for a new home, they go into this kind of trance zone. They're extremely relaxed. I think we all could learn something from that. Um, and we, we were able to move that swarm into our second box.
Yeah, so there's a few of them just starting to do the fanning thing. They stick their butts out. We did it! And so we once again have two colonies. Okay, now Nick is gonna answer a question. Several of you have asked about blades and sharpening. Let's just ask about sharpening in general. Sharpening. Um, well, we have several sharp things out here that we use all the time. Uh, and I have a different approach to many of them. So uh, if you are a woodworker at all, you should definitely form a relationship with a saw shop um, to take all of your carbide tipped blades to. So all of those circular saw blades, uh, all of my planer knives, all of uh, those types of woodworking tools, I take it to a saw shop and I uh, have them sharpen for me for a really reasonable cost and it extends the life of tools and blades. The uh, bandsaw, the sawmill blades, I actually have to send off uh, because our saw shop uh, that's close to us does not do them. So I send them to a, a wood miser dealer who has a small, um, a small machine to do our blades. Uh, in the future, I have somebody uh, who is interested in teaching me how to take care of those blades myself. So the next time I'm up towards Canada, I'm going to go get a little lesson and a small machine to take home. Um, so that's fantastic. As far as chisels and other even yard implements and stuff, uh, I do have um, a power whetstone as well as uh, water stones to take care of our knives and our chisels and things like that. So I do that here at home. It's getting its strength back. It's doing birdie push-ups. You guys are great roommates. <laughs> More Mountain Dream Home is coming right up. Everyone have a great night. We'll see you soon.